What's up, everyone? It's your boy, NordRad89 here, bringing you another rad movie review. And keeping in with the holiday season, we're going to talk about another holiday horror film. And today, it's Don't Open Till Christmas. This is a holiday, you know, Christmas slasher film that came out in 1984. And, man, I'm excited to talk about this one. This one recently just got showed on the, I believe, the Joe Bob's Briggs show on Shudder. They were showing that for one of their, you know, movies that they do and stuff. So I was happy about that. But this is also on Tubi, and that's where it's streaming if you want to check this film out. If you haven't seen it yet, because today we're going to be getting into a little bit of spoilers. Like I said, this film is from 1984. So let's get into this video. Roll it. Don't Open Till Christmas is a 1984 slasher where we follow a Scotland Yard inspector who is trying to track down a killer that is going around the city stalking and killing Santa, people who are dressed like Santa Claus. And this is, yeah, like I said, more, much more of like a mystery type film, but it also has like a sleazy type nature to it too as well because it's brought to you by the same producers as Pieces. So if you've seen Pieces... You're going to know what kind of film you're going to go into with this one. This doesn't have has heightened kills or a gore factor isn't on the same level as that. But the sleaze factor is still there definitely for sure. Another cool thing is we have Edmund Purdom as the director in this film. And that is also one of the actors in the film. He plays one of the inspectors in this movie. And we have two inspectors. And they're working together to, like I said, track down this killer. And let's get right into some of the positives right away. I love the fact that this is... A film that take a Christmas horror themed slasher film that takes place in you know London and like in that area somewhere other than the United States. I just find a fascination in that. I love going on adventures in films where they take place in different areas because it gives me a chance you know a window to see into the other facets of life because I don't travel often. I've never been outside the country, so basically watching movies is how I get you know my views into how like you know life is across the pond. You know what I mean? So it's really cool that this film takes place like I said overseas I also like the fact that we have some really good like the guy actors in this film are good some of the girl actors aren't that great though we'll talk about that more into the negatives but our, our two inspectors are really good actors and they you know push the for the story forward if the act if they were bad this film wouldn't be that great at all but they definitely serve the story well and it kind of leads into more into the twist too when we get into the middle of that third act. Another great thing, like I said, about I love about this film is the sleaze factor, you know what I mean? It's got, you know, nudity and it's sleazy. We we have experienced, you know, like women of the night, you know, going around in this film too and, you know, nude photography and stuff like that. So I, I like that facet of this film, you know what I mean? It's sleazy, it's dirty, but when I go to my slashers films, I don't go to see, you know, a clean, happy, nice film, you know what I mean? I go to see some raunchy, dirty stuff. That's what I want to see in my slasher films. So this one definitely has that factor. Also, you know, being that they're hunting Santa Claus, it has a good Christmas theme, you know what I mean? The guys, either guys or women, anybody. Anybody that has a Santa Claus type outfit on is in danger in this movie. So, you know, probably shouldn't be wearing this hat. I'd be in danger right now if I was in this film. So, but it's still, like I said, it has that cool, you know, creepy nature almost like um jack the ripper type vibes you get you get that vibes somewhat in this film another good positive for me is that this is a christmas themed slasher so like i said i'm a huge slasher fan and i love christmas horror films so if you're in that realm or in that nature of a film you know i'm that subgenre i'm definitely going to lean towards that film i'm going to get some awesome enjoyment and some factor out of the movie even if i don't enjoy it I'm going to have fun talking crap about the movie. So it's, that's what I mean. There's certain things like that that just go hand in hand with, you know, being a reviewer. But yes, don't open till Christmas. You know, I, I, I recommend this one because it is a blast for sure. For me, it was. Another cool thing about this movie is it is a quick watch. It's not that long at all. It is a pretty quick watch and it flies by. So I like that factor in it too. You know, it doesn't demand sitting on the couch a very long time. And also... When we get to a certain reveal, I'm the final girl. We get a final girl in this film, kind of. And I liked her, at you know, like just the way she's treated and stuff like that. But there's some funny things in this film. We're going to get kind of into the mixed and negatives right now as we're talking and blabbing on. They have this girl running around in Christmas time. This is Christmas time in, you know, the UK. And she's running around in a very skimpy white shirt and black like a black tight skirt and I was like oh no oh no it's 
freezing. It's freezing over there, man. It's, you know, it's it's cold. I know people who live over there and it's freezing at that time of the year. So yeah, there's some aspects of this film where they have a lot of Santa stuff and a lot of Christmas vibes, but they don't necessarily focus on other small nuanced things where it, do it doesn't look cold. It doesn't really look that cold and, you know, certain things like that. Also, like I said, our lady actresses, they really didn't get the best. I like our final girl. She's one of the, uh, like, ladies of the night. She works at a peep show type place where guys go to, like, you know, talk to the girls and you see them on the other side of the glass and you pay them money and they do stuff for you, you know what I mean? So she's one of those ladies, but she's kind of our final girl in this film. And I like her, but the other actresses in this movie are just so bad like the dialogue delivery the writing it's just like it's very cringe laughy status but it kind of does fit the style of the film you know you don't go to these films to necessarily see the greatest writing but good writing more believable actors and actresses definitely help your story for sure another thing that's a mixed and negative with me for this film is about 25 minutes in i knew who the killer was there's a certain character that gets revealed in this movie and this guy is so i already spoiled it right now i just spoiled it it is a guy but i told you spoiler warning in the beginning it's a guy and his name is giles and once his reveal comes into this film it didn't surprise me at all because the moment he steps on screen and he says his first line of dialogue I knew he was the fucking killer. Like, he just gave off that vibe right away. And I was like, oh, well, maybe they'll bait and switch me. And it'll be, you know, he's the blatantly obvious one. And then in the third act, they're going to, you know, pull the rug out from under me. No, but no, they didn't. It's revealed that, yeah, it's Giles. And he plays a guy who's supposedly an ex-newspaper writer who's trying to, knows about the killer and is trying to help one of the inspectors. And is like, you know, oh, if I, um... If I was to somehow give you information on this killer, would that help your career? And he's just kind of all around at these weird times, asking questions to certain people and bugging certain people. And, you know, he's just one of those characters in the film. And yes, he is the one. And you end up finding out there's a second twist in that third act middle way through that he's related to one of the inspectors. And that's their kind of red herring is they're kind of leading into this film that it's maybe one of the inspectors, actually the, the director of this film, that it's possibly him. He kind of steps away from the case is a very, at a very awkward time and just leaves and retires and his partner's like oh what's what's going on so but I didn't fall for the red herring thing at all because it happened too late in the movie and like I said I've had too much suspicion of Giles and they didn't do enough to make me not believe it was Giles so when they reveal it's him it's like oh well but now one other negative for me is that when we got to like I said our final girl and that third act we already know it's Giles and we have kind of our chase scene and our final girl moment. And then we get our one last jump scare kill. You know, it reminds me a lot of Scream, how they make fun of that and Scream. You know, that one last scare. They always come up for that one last scare. But what happens to our villain character in this film? No. Fuck no. That dude would be hardcore dead. He'd be dead. And like uh, just the moment when she's walking down, he falls down like this fly stairs all the way down, like all the way down and hits this freaking hard concrete slab piece and freaking snaps like his head snaps back like that. You know what I mean? We don't see it crack on the ground. We know nothing like that. But I'm like, no, 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 no. And she goes down there to check on his body and we get the one last scare and he grabs her. So it's she, that's what I mean, our, our character in here, our girl, our main actress character that's kind of our, you know, main final girl. I don't know if you can say she's a final girl because we don't even know if she actually got away. There's still some sleazy fun to be had with this movie. Some Christmas themes, you know, some kills. Like I said, if you like all that stuff, you're going to enjoy this film for sure. Don't Open Till Christmas, for me, is going to get a 7 out of 10. That's still a very solid, strong rating and definitely a film I would return to. And I'm eager to pick this up because I believe Vinegar Syndrome has this title and they have a very gorgeous slipcover. So if it's still out there, I hope so. I'm going to try to pick that up and I'll let you all know because, yeah, like I said, Vinegar Syndrome, if you want it, go check out their website or go check out maybe like, you know, eBay or some other places, Amazon, they might have that. And like I said, it's a very gorgeous slipcover for this film. But yes, let me know in the comment section what you think of this movie. If you've seen this film or if you haven't, just let me know in the comments. Say what's up. You know, it doesn't matter even if you don't know what I'm talking about or some of these films. Like I would love to hear from you guys, all the supporters. I greatly appreciate it. This has a very, been a very amazing year for the channel. You know, I'm already up to like I think like 230 subscribers, which... 
when I started this channel, I never thought I'd be at that height or anything like that. So I greatly appreciate all of you out there. But most importantly, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, but also have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.